At the close of the war in Germany, at the conference in Potsdam, Hap participated in plans for the unfinished work in the Pacific. And after this conference, Hap, with the glow of victory still upon him, recognized the contributions of all the services in the defeat of Germany. This is an appropriate occasion, for we are celebrating tonight the 38th birthday of military air power in the United States. At this time, the newest of the service, services acknowledge the debt it owes to the armies of our land and the navies of our sea. We dip our wings to their glorious traditions, and tonight particularly, I want also to salute all of those who fly and those who make flying possible be they of the Marines or of the Navy, or in civilian aviation in any of its many forms, or in the Army Air Forces, for they have all played a part in winning this war. Now able to concentrate full attention on the war with Japan, he flew to bases in the Pacific. Friendly and good-natured, he found what he wished to know without seeming to try. Receptive, even-tempered, he was on the best terms with his commanders, extremely sensitive to their problems. Now according to plan, what had knocked out Germany could do the same in Japan, the B-29 the pioneer of air intercontinental bombers. The plane which, thanks to Hap's convictions and leadership, had been in the works long enough to be ready. Three months after VJ Day, General of the Army Hap Arnold terminated 42 years of service. Hap lived to see his greatest dream come true. On September 18, 1947, the creation of a separate service, the United States Air Force. Five years after retirement, his full life came to a close. He was buried at Arlington Cemetery in January 1950. Hosts of devoted friends mourned his passing. Throughout the nation, there was a sense of deep personal loss. There is much to remind us of his role in American air power. This is the Arnold Engineering Development Center at Tullahoma, Tennessee. Not only in name, but in spirit, was General Arnold identified with this center, devoted to research and development in the Air Force, to problems of air and space engineering. Since his time, much has happened, and in many ways, what he stood for has come to pass. It was Hap Arnold who sought the best in aircraft and material, continuous experimentation, development, progress in the air. was foremost in urging a separate air force for defending America in the skies. It was he who urged a strategic air command, our global atomic striking force, a massive deterrent to the threat of war. It was he who advocated an air force second to none as a means not only of defense, but of preventing another global catastrophe. He saw the need for greater public interest in matters of air power, 
Without awareness and support, no nation could expect to remain strong. As the years go by, as we move faster and faster in and into the age of space, one influence above all seems now more lasting. It was General Arnold who envisioned an institution to train Air Force leaders, capable of guiding our nation's air defense, whatever the future. The Air Force Academy, and every man who is honored to attend there, is profoundly touched by his influence. Here there is thoroughness and dedication to the task. The standards at the Academy stem in large measure from the example set by the first Air Force leader, who in June 1949 was made the first General of the Air Force. From this academy, that was once his vision, will come other leaders with the training, background and spirit, and with their own vision of what must be done. Such men will help keep America free, as did Hap Arnold. General Hap Arnold. Modest, hardworking, and good-natured. We in the U.S. Army are proud of him as a soldier and for his achievement in helping to build the Air Force of today. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.